Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're taking a look at a simple, yet surprisingly misunderstood effect. We're looking at how to crop video in Premiere Pro. And hey, if you're not familiar with us, we're all about helping you, the video creator, with templates, footage, tutorials, plugins, audio, and more. In fact, we have tons of free Premiere Pro templates ready to download. I put a link in the description down below, so make sure to hop over and grab some free stuff. Okay, so here we are in Premiere Pro, and we're gonna start by making sure that we have an example video on our timeline. Now, in order to crop our video, you need to search out for the crop effect in your effects panel. To find it, search in the bar up top here for crop, and it should pop up. By dragging and dropping it right onto your clip, you can start to use this effect. Go up to your effect controls section and scroll down to the bottom to see the crop effect. It should look like this. Percentage sliders for left, top, right, and bottom, a zoom checkbox, and an edge feather as options for you to influence. You can grab one of the sliders here and move it around to see what it's doing. By choosing a percentage slider and moving it, you can see that it starts to chop off a portion of the image from where that particular side says. So if we choose left, it starts chopping from the left. And if we choose top, we can see that it starts chopping the image from the top. So let's leave this image the way that it is with portions of the clip chopped off. And now let's start to increase the edge feather option and you can see that the more you increase it, the more the edge loses its harsh, sharp edge and becomes more soft and gradated. Let's set this back to zero and then we'll leave the frame with chopped portions of black emptiness so that we can see this final element, selecting the zoom checkbox here to see what happens. We see that it takes portions of the video that have black empty portions remaining and literally stretches out the image to fill the frame. And you can see that what it's doing is not actually zooming in the image, but literally stretching it so that you can see that my face here is not actually remaining in its proper proportion. This is actually unlikely to be what you're looking for when you create your effect. More likely what you're probably looking to do is scale up your image at the top here under motion. By increasing it and then moving the position of it so that those black portions are removed, you can see that our image retains its proportions. But you might notice one last thing. With this solution, there's very little purpose for the actual crop effect at all. If we turn it on and off, we can see that it's not actually doing anything because everything that it's influencing is beyond the edges of the frame. So a better term for this Premiere Pro effect might actually not be crop, but instead chop. Because when you're thinking of cropping, you might actually be thinking about more of what happens inside of Photoshop, where you move a box around, set its parameters, and then once you confirm, your entire image conforms to those new boundaries. To be clear, that type of system does not exist in Premiere Pro, like at all. And it's primarily because video has a much smaller number of dimensions that are consistently used. You can look everywhere and see a bunch of different examples of photos with different length and height ratios for a wide variety of different use cases. But for video, you kind of just got your 16 by 9 ratio, your more cinematic styles, and then more square and vertical ratios for things like Instagram and other smartphone applications. So even though theoretically you have an infinite variety of choice, the vast majority of use cases are only going to come down to about two or three different ratios. So the bottom Bottom line is that for video, you'll typically set up your length and height parameters before you actually start editing. And everything you do after that is conformed to that decision, not the other way around. So if you need to chop out something undesirable, just scale up and make sure it's not visible. So now that we've taken the time to know how to technically use it, let's take a look at some unique applications and use cases for the crop effect in your videos. Number one. If you place the clip you're currently cropping on top of another clip that will appear after it, you can actually take one of these directional sliders and keyframe it to start without having made any changes, making sure that at the place where you first make this keyframe, you have the clip beneath present. Then move forward between three to 10 frames and move it all the way up to 100%. Now you can see that your crop effect is being used as a linear wipe transition. Add some beziers to your keyframe and move the graph around a bit to make it truly your own. Number two. There's a lot of times in the past where we've taken pieces of video and played it over top of another piece of video. When it's done this way, it's more of a picture-in-picture -picture effect, but the principle can be applied to something like this, where you have multiple pieces of footage being displayed at the same time. The setup for this is pretty simple. Just line up your clips on the timeline and place them roughly in the position that you want them to be. Then you can crop them down with the crop effect and retain those nice crisp straight edges. 
which would be much harder to do with the masking tool, for example. Once you've got them all ready to go, it might be tough to make them look like they're not blending into each other, depending on the colors that are in each video. So a nice border created from your essential graphics panel can help. Choose a new rectangle and then color it whatever you want. Repeat it for as many individual lines as you need and your effect now looks something like this. And our final example is actually just another way to get an effect that we showed in a previous tutorial. It's a cinematic black bar opening effect. Great for openings to videos with more serious and unique tones to them. We showed a different method in this other tutorial, but you can also get it with the crop effect. Making sure that there's no footage underneath your main footage, take the crop effect and set both the top and bottom to 50%. Then set a keyframe where you want it to start opening. Then move way down the line until you get to where you finally want the full reveal to be complete. And set both the top and bottom parameters to 0%. Now your footage is slowly revealing in a really unique way. And guys, that's just three examples of ways that you can take advantage of the crop effect for your own videos. But there's plenty more. If you have a unique use case that you actually use, drop a comment and let us know about it. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.